at Brenda Cowan Elementary and I teach dance and PE. And we will let our executive director, uh, Jamie, introduce our very special guest. Uh, well, and I'll back up for just a second, Daniel, and say that uh, Jill Geddes is joining us via recorded session. She's actually at the baseball field tonight. Uh, so she's our current uh, health education teacher of the year from uh, uh, Fayette County uh, with sorry, uh, Tate's Creek. Sorry. Yeah, all good, all good. And uh, we are very excited uh, to, to have, as Daniel said, special guest tonight, Mr. Sean Nevels uh, from the great state of Missouri. Uh, Sean has, has been uh, very active over there, was with their Department of Education, and recently took the job as CDC Project Director. So, Sean, welcome, and you want to say hello? Hey, how's it going? Kentucky shaping anybody on Facebook Live, no matter where you are, who's on live. I'm glad to be on. Glad to be on. It was just a simple call from the man, Jamie Sparks, and it was an easy yes on my behalf. So, it's glad to be here. Glad to be here. Great. Thanks, Sean. We appreciate you being here, too. So, we, we asked uh, these amazing special guests to kind of give us kind of some insight on their experiences. Uh, both uh, teaching virtually, uh, teaching face-to-face, -face, and some of the resources that we can share with you, uh, our members, uh, and especially what Sean is going to share in a minute. Uh, I, don't, I don't know, we didn't really plan the, the order. Uh, who, uh, ladies first is, is my suggestion. Uh, Lydia, maybe you could uh, describe some of, the, uh, some of your experiences so far. All right. Well, I'm excited to share with you some of my experiences and some tools that I've been using. I am not perfect. I just have a few things in my tool belt that I'd like to share. Um, my motto this year um, is to spread dance, not germs. I read that in a, a blog recently and I was like, that's fun. Um, and I need some happy in my life here. Um, so dance is an awesome thing pandemic or not, um, whether you're using it for artistic purposes or as a form of recreation and exercise, it's an awesome way to get our students moving. No equipment is required. Um, they can stay in a specific area and it promotes physical literacy as well as mental and emotional and social benefits. So if you can't tell, I love dancing. Um, I think a lot of us that are are together here tonight, love to move, and we express ourselves through movement, whether that be dance or um, lifting or going on runs, whatever is your jam, um, our students also love that too. So um, I also love to give my students chances to be creative, think out of the box, um, kind of like what we've always done, but I feel like we've been doing a whole lot as teachers um, nowadays. So um, my classes are still virtual, so I'm pre-recording my lessons, but I'm going to give you some ideas that you could use pre-recorded or in your uh, gym or studio or outside or wherever it is that you're going to get to um, teach in person. So um, let's see. Oh, I also do a Zoom every Friday with my creative arts team, which is fabulous because um, we incorporate all of the arts into one Zoom. Um, it's, it's great to see our students moving with us. And I'll tell you what, I cried the first day or the first time we had it this year, um, just to see them all moving together. Even though it was virtual, um, it was an awesome thing. Um, I know not everyone loves dancing, but um, your students might, okay? So um, there are some different ways that you can use dance. You can use it as a warm up. You can use it as a short activity. It can be the main focus of your lesson. Possibilities are endless. So I, I like to change it up a lot. Um, I find that when we've been doing virtual learning, I give students more choices. I think of my class as like a buffet of learning. Um, try it, you might like it. Um, and so um, when, I, when I have them, I want them to stay active. So I want them to find something that they love. And all the resources that I'm gonna mention, I've um, 
sent a link to Jamie and it'll be on our Kentucky Shape site. Um, uh, creative movement, I do a lot of that with my younger students. Um, it's an opportunity to create, um, reinforce those locomotor, non-locomotor um, skills. Let's see, what else? Warm up dances. I love, I, I like to create dances. So that may not be you, that's fine. You can find them on YouTube or um, lots of social media. Um, has lots of choices. Um, so when in person, I usually do a warm up dance and I'll do it for several weeks so that students learn it and then add on to it and then they know it and then we can kind of review it at another time. Um, but you could also take it a little further. Uh, something that I've done is uh, worked on those elements of dance, space, time, and force. For instance, um, the first dance I did this school year, um, students had to pay attention to, to levels. And so did I do high, middle, and low levels? And I didn't. So they had to create phrases um, showing me how they would change it a little bit to, to, to have all those levels. And I use Flipgrid a whole lot for, for my dance um, assessments so that I can actually see the students moving. Another resource that I love is Hip Hop Public Health. Um, great lesson starters. An activity that I've done is have students watch different clips of different hip hop movements. They're fairly simple. Um, and then I give them a rubric where they have to create a short dance or as long as they want. Um, and they have to use like three of the movements that they talked about and learned from the clips on hip hop public health and then add their own. Um, and again, I use Flipgrid a lot. Um, it's not dance, but um, I gave students choices this last week of activities that they could do. And um, one was a stretch and strength poses, one was a HIT workout, and another was an aerobic dance that actually I found on the Hip Hop Public Health. But um, I asked students what, what they chose and to talk about what they liked about it and why they chose it. And so I found a lot of them loved um, the strength and stretch activities, which is, it incorporated a lot of yoga and some Pilates and just stretching because they said they loved it because they had been sitting at a computer all morning and it felt really good. So um, another idea would be to have a theme. For example, I used agility um, in the spring. I used like an agility ladder and we did all kinds of activities with that. But then I did um, the turbo hustle, which is uh, where students have to really think fast, switching their weight um, from side to side. So I encourage you to collaborate with others. And like, I know that our music teacher uh, is phenomenal. And like this Friday, we're going to collaborate on something um, where he does some music elements and I do music elements and we smash them together um, because they go hand in hand. Um, uh, responding to dance. So I also tend to when students come to me or when I have class, I want them moving the whole time. Um, so when I return to school, I think I'm going to have to give them some breaks, especially if um, they're wearing a mask or I have to teach them inside of their classrooms and they can't come to the gym or uh, the space with me. Um, so we might be watching some quality dance performances where we can critique and talk about different elements and also um, just talk about what we liked about it or maybe what we didn't. So um, lastly, I encourage you to dance, all right? Um, even if it's out of your comfort zone, if it's not your jam, do it. Um, try it. Your students will be more likely to join you um, rather than an unfamiliar person on a big screen and our students have had a lot of screen time. So um, yeah, there are a lot of resources out there. Um, I'll be happy to talk with you about them or share what I have. Um, and yeah, that link will be on Kentucky Shape for you to peruse. Thanks for having me tonight. Great. Well, Lydia, quick question. Um, yeah. 
Uh, when you, you say your your lessons are pre-recorded, uh, could you give any advice on maybe editing those with your advice of having you as the teacher record yourself and then project it so, that, so your students can see you dance? How do you okay. edit your videos? What do you use? I, I use iMovie to edit um, a lot. <laughs> it's a lot of time. Um, I have a tripod, I use my phone, um, that's what I use. I also used WeMovie, is it WeMovie? Yeah. We Video. never mind, sorry, oh, We Video. Um, They're not a sponsor, don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I spent a lot of time pre-recording because I want it to look, I want it to look good. <laughs> and I also put them on Google Slides so that uh, students can have links to click on or um, it'll have directions. So that's worked well for, for my, my school. Um, so they're kind of used to using the Google Slides presentation. So I just insert the And uh, I guess finally, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm asking all the questions because you're the expert. So uh, like, how do you, Lydia and I, are, we are in the same district, uh, on opposite ends of the district and we're completely virtual. And, um, what do you think would be your ways that you're going to socially distance, physically distance when you get back face-to-face -face instruction? Uh, dance is obviously pretty easy, but what are your thoughts? What are, how, do you, how are you going to process that? I miss hugs, Daniel. <laughs> I miss all my students so much. I, I, don't, I don't have a specific plan yet other than I will probably tape off areas in my in the gym hopefully I'll get to use it we'll see I'm gonna really be flexible and um yeah I want to I want to help our students come back safely so um I envision taping off I've bought I bought a lot of tape um to tape off the gym floor so that they stay in a specific section I know that in dance studios that's what that's what's working so I'm yeah. open to ideas though. <laughs> well, on that note, that's a pretty good segue. Uh, Chad, uh, you have been face-to-face -face, uh, instructing since the first day of school. So we, we asked you to come on and share your experience. Uh, what do you got for us, man? We're here to pick your brain. Oh yeah. Uh, Especially uh, Lydia and I, we, we're here to pick your brain. Oh yes. <laughs> uh, first of all, uh, yes, tape, uh, very good investment. Uh, to have One, um, a lesson that I did that uh, I'll try to get a link here in a little bit and I'll try to forward that to uh, Jamie um, that we've been doing for like the first three or four weeks is uh, it's just called big time station switch and um, I, I just got into some of the the old school uh, PE books and started just kind of looking at, you know, what can we do individually? What can we do that's, that's solo, but the, the kids can still do it and enjoy it. And got into a few books that, uh, uh, that had some stations and just made some modifications and things like that. And, um, and I sent a, a picture of the, the three uh, books that just kind of stood out as far as remembering my research. Um, uh, Jamie's got those somewhere, but, uh, the first one was Station Games, uh, Fun and Imaginative PE Lessons, and that's Maggie uh, Burke. Um, and I don't know if we're, you know, if we're doing promotion or anything like that, but that's, that's just a resource that I looked. Uh, another one was like Creative Physical Activities and Equipment. Um, the, the picture that's on the front kind of has these cardboard tubes and, and shoes uh, just where, you know, you can kind of, get some creative uh, equipment going. And then there was a book about playground and recess, uh, just basically games, but but was able okay, to- Let me stop you there for just a second. I shared one of your links in the chat for people okay. who are watching. And then let me really quickly show the website. I was gonna do that as a lead in so that sure. don't, I don't want people to get overwhelmed with the, all the great things that are being shared. So every. So I, I'm going to show everybody where the website is, and then and then that way they're not having to worry about writing down and know where to look at this stuff. So right. on the website, um, 
from the website underneath the update section, go to updates, ky, kyshape.org, click updates, and then we've updated this virtual town hall. So underneath this virtual town hall is the original notice we put out for registration and the event. Um, and then here at the bottom, uh, all the slides that you'll be seeing tonight, I'll be doing a KDE update in just a few minutes. All the slides from that are right here that you'll see in just a few minutes. Uh, Chad's blog that he shared, we pushed that out with this uh, advertisement of this town hall. His full blog uh, uh, that he shared with us around his first five weeks is there. And then the, the links he's just talking about, I'll go and add those to that underneath this paragraph from Chad. So give me, give me a, a 30 minutes after we're done here and you'll see Chad's links right there. Uh, Mary Jo Geddes, you'll be hearing from her in just a second. That full video from Mary Jo is right here. Uh, the link that we just showed you from Lydia is right there. And then the link uh, Sean's gonna take you through with Shape America is right there. So everything is right there on the page. It's easy to find uh, and trying to, we're trying to take one more thing off your plate. So we know there's a lot on your plate and trying to plan. So putting it all in one place for you underneath of, of that. So I hope that helps. Go ahead, Chad. Yeah, and the, uh, the lesson there, the big time station switch, um, when I share that, it's, uh, it's set up to where we use tape. Um, I set them up like eight feet apart. Uh, they, they go to each station. It's kind of in a, uh, a circuit type training, but use the, uh, the app that, that kind of sets up the Tabata workouts. Um, Seconds Pro uh, got that from a guy that's on this chat currently uh, in our meeting. Uh, he just gave a thumbs up, Mr. Dan there. And uh, that seems to work really well. Uh, you know, you just got music going. And then uh, I found out initially, don't give them just one minute stations, give them a minute and a half because they've got some transition. Uh, we set up where they've got grocery bags. Um, I went to a store and then also uh, just kind of solicited our teachers in the building. Everybody's got grocery bags. They, they brought them in and, um, and then one store donated like a thousand grocery bags. And so they're putting like little pieces of equipment in there. There's juggling scarves. Um, when I ran out of juggling scarves, the two grocery bags for, for scarves as well. Um, a jump rope. They made their own paper balls so that we don't have to get out, um, get out our own and then have to clean those all the time. So uh, whenever they get finished, we keep those. And then I put them in like a, I call it sanitation station number two. They put it in a, a tote. We spray disinfectant on it. We leave it in there for at least 24 hours, get it out. Um, that way they're using their own stuff. Uh, it rotates through. And just a little side note right now, uh, some may not know, but Hardin County is on an A and B schedule. So we're getting half the kids two days a week. Um, Monday and Thursday is our A group. And then Tuesday and Friday is our B group. And then we alternate our Wednesdays. Uh, like this Wednesday, the A kids were, were able to come. So really that is kind of helped as well. I know not all districts will be, will be going back like that. Um, but that's kind of where we are with that one. Um, currently, Project Fit, you know, which I get the privilege of being a trainer for them. Uh, we are working on a website to be able to, to put some more um, in-person lessons out there. And that website, I think I mentioned in the blog, is going to be end of September. But we have a, a two-week later um, date now, so that's been extended. And uh, there's going to be some lessons on there as well. Uh, one in particular I've been working on videoing is called Slow Mo in the Mirror. Uh, another one I've been working on is uh, Tallest Tower, but Social Distancing Edition. Um, those will be on that website too whenever that, that gets up and running. And um, if I could tell anybody, you know, just one nugget of information is just be, you know, patient with yourself. Uh, be patient with the kids because uh, I think teacher endurance and student endurance is definitely a factor uh, when you've been online or off, off for six months. Not totally off because we know we don't hardly really take a break or, or get time off. We're always working on something. 
but just not being in person and then going back in person makes a difference. And uh, so to me personally, I think our priorities as we go back in are social emotional learning, um, you know, working on how to do the, the cleanliness and making sure we got procedures in place to, to take care of the kids and, and make sure that we can stay in person if possible. Um, and then uh, I think in agreement with Lydia, uh, just keep them moving. And dance has been a good thing for uh, K, K through two for me. <laughs> Cause K through two, uh, I'm, I'm keeping them on their exercise spots. We're doing some dance video and then we'll do like some instruction that goes along with it and with the components of fitness. And then we're getting back into the videos. And you're going you're gonna to share the video of yourself dancing, right? Right, right? <laughs> I, 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 I may, I may do that. <laughs> With with uh, some coaxing from you know if all of you all say we want to see that video all five people here so <laughs> um, I, I think that's that's about what I have um, as far as all that goes but the uh, the resources are pretty important too um, I do a lot of like cup stacking not the speed stacking stuff but just creative cup builds. Um, there's a, a place that I found they're actually based out of Idaho, but they have a warehouse in Fairdale, Kentucky and, uh, found some, some cups that are relatively cheap there to be able to, to try to get for resources. Um, they, uh, typically districts will kind of do the process of, they have to have a purchase order and then they pay later. But this particular company um, doesn't have that process, so I had to get a an adult in not in the building, but a, a parent who's been a real consistent help to to see if they would donate the cups, and and they did. Um, but it, you know, it still might be a viable option for folks. Or um, so, uh, quick question, Ted: uh, Could you compare your uh, pre-COVID face-to-face instruction with what you're doing now and maybe identify three to five things that you have to do now uh, that you didn't have to do. Um, I always don't want to be practical. Like, you tell me what I'm going to have to do when I get face-to-face. What, what really helps you help your students and still meet those guidelines? Um, one thing is like stay hula hoops. Uh, you know, the kids were carrying their own hoop with them to, to the stations. But once the, the class is over, and this is something we didn't do in the past, um, we, we were provided with a spray from the district. So I take those pieces of equipment. Um, I have the kids just put them in, in a pile separately in the gym, spray that down. Uh, some stuff we're provided with is supposed to be good within 20 minutes to be able to use the stuff again. Some stuff we're provided with, they, they say two minutes. Um, but I, my advice is go extra conservative. You know, whatever, whatever plans somebody gives you, it's like, you know, do whatever you can to say, hey, I've done more. And uh, so I do that and then generally leave those hula hoops about maybe two class periods before, um, before use again. Um, Another thing is uh, the district has been very, very good as far as providing us 10 minutes in between, um, you know, to be able to take care of the equipment and all that stuff. And um, that also provides for homerooms not transitioning in and out together at the same time. So you can provide the, the social distance there. Um, I don't know. I think that was, that's two or three, but uh, the sanitation station that I mentioned earlier, um, I've got one that's on like a little mobile bookshelf, just keeping hand sanitizer there and then having the, the clear totes um, over in another section where kids can leave their stuff um, to be sanitized and then another hand sanitizer station. That way you can kind of have them taking stuff and putting away, sanitizing their hands and getting all that done at the same time just for efficiency. Well, thanks, man. I know uh, when other districts uh, jump on board to face-to-face instruction, people are going to be reaching out to you. And I highly encourage anybody watching to check out uh, Ted's blog, uh, which you can find uh, Jeremy shared just a minute ago. I uh, highly encourage you to read that. 
got some really good stuff in it. Um, speaking of really good stuff, uh, there was someone that was unable to um, meet uh, the uh, uh, turnaround, quick turnaround time of putting this together for everyone. Uh, Bill Geddes, he is uh, an amazing uh, educator up at Tate Street High School in Lexington, Kentucky. Um, so she uh, pre-recorded a little, little something to share with, with everybody tonight. And we're going to play an excerpt from this, just the first few minutes of hers. And then, uh, as I said, her full uh, piece is, is available online with this video. Hi, um, my name is Mary Jo Geddes, and I apologize for not being live this evening. Um, I'm currently at uh, Southeastern Baseball watching my boys play baseball. So, um, Jamie asked me to do a little presentation on um, teaching virtually. So um, I have a little, a few things I'm gonna hit up with you to this evening of what has worked for me so far in this virtual environment in 2020. So let me see here. Okay, so I, uh, I teach at Taste Creek High School. Um, I am currently in my 18th year teaching and by far, this has been probably um, one of my most challenging school years. Um, I teach freshman health and PE, and I do have one um, women's conditioning class. So I am teaching um, remotely at my house um, since August 26th. Um, Fayette County is still um, remotely. And I also have my own three children. I have a 10-year-old, a nine-year-old, and a six-year-old who we're all doing this together at my house. So um, I have this little picture here because this is how I felt um, the first two weeks of teaching remotely with my own three kids. Constant stress and wanted to bang my head and was praying for 2020 to end as quickly as possible. But as I get through this presentation, I'm in a much better place now, and I'm gonna give you um, tips and some ideas so you um, can end up where I am, or hopefully you're already there. So the next one, um, okay, so basically tonight, I'm just gonna go over um, four main points is the ones that I have struggled with um, the most um, this since August is getting students engaged teaching virtually um, how I'm going to uh, teach skills based health in a virtual um, capacity teaching PE virtually and for me it was very hard the, the importance of balancing teaching remotely and um, spending time with your family. All right, so as you see there, Joe's got some great insights that she provides and I encourage you to, as I said, that full video is available uh, on our website. Um, before we turn it over to Sean, we're gonna do quickly kind of frame this up because, uh, and, and show you some things that, that are available if you're not familiar, uh, because everybody on this call, along with our board and, and countless members across the state, uh, were involved in um, following and keeping up with this ever-changing conversation around COVID and school reentry. And, and it literally has evolved from week to week, and we still find ourselves in that place where things change rapidly. But uh, there are some guideposts, some goal posts that we've had. Uh, KDE put out some early uh, school reentry. And so we started in June with our town halls. Those are still found here underneath our COVID-19 uh, section of the website. So supporting school reentry, you can actually click there and find all six of those town halls from Brian Creaseman to Angela Stark to Jessica Napier, everybody was talking about two things, the KDE school reentry guidance and the Shape America considerations, because I think the Shape America considerations came out right around the time of our first town hall. That document has been invaluable to helping us. The Department of Education has not issued individual guidance to school districts in Kentucky. They said simply refer to the Shape America considerations. And again, I'm going to repeat that. Kentucky is a local control state. That means consideration and guidance is what you have to consider. Your local school board and your SBDM are the ultimate authority on many of these issues. That's the reason Chad's school and district has been back in place. They are locally controlled. 
So again and again, we see people wanting to point fingers different places, but Kentucky long has been a local control state. So ultimately, these are things to help you inform your decision making, to take back to your local decision makers, and that's where the decisions have to be made around uh, a lot of these issues. I just want to be clear in that because that's one of the one questions we get a lot. Well, what's the state telling us? What's the, the national telling us? The local control is a big deal here in Kentucky, and that certainly is, is the case with, as we look at COVID. So underneath our website, uh, underneath the COVID-19 resources, you click this link here. Uh, there's the new color-coded system that just came out. We updated the website. But underneath this, this is the latest guidance as of August 31st. So I, I, what I did, and these are the slides you have available, uh, we went in and just kind of did some screenshots of some of the key material that most is applicable to health and physical educators. So um, as we look at that, here are some of the key themes that you see. The blue areas at the top are the key themes of this document. So uh, cloth face coverings, personal protective equipment. As of 831, when this document came out, the use of face, the use of cloth face covering should be required by all students and staff at all times when in the building or on the bus, unless there's a medical waiver. So that's a big change that happened, all right? We actually did an advocacy video back in the summer. Lydia and Modanda and other folks got together. And at that time, we walked in with our mask on and we took them off and we participated and we put them back on when we left. We didn't put that video out because KDE guidance has changed on this issue. It was when you're less than six feet apart or mask when you move. That was the original rule. The rule now is if you're inside, a mask should be covering your face and student's face at all time unless there's a medical exemption. Uh, there is a great resource here that's within that, uh, CDC. Don't just assume because kids have been required to wear a mask that they're going to do it properly. Uh, we, we have to teach our kids. We have to teach our community. We have to teach our family. So there's some great resources on the CDC website around how to wear a mask safely, how to take it off, and how to handle it. These are things that we're going to have to teach and continue to reteach, especially at the elementary level, but I would say all the way across the K-12 spectrum. Um, and so there's just some uh, helpful graphics that are also included in the guidance as well as far as proper, uh, how to properly wear the mask. Social distancing, you've already heard. That. That's the reason we're so excited to have Lydia on tonight. Dance is a great activity. Uh, well, she gave you a lot of great resources. That's one that really uh, allows you to incorporate a lot of things, but also make sure that you're maintaining that physical and that social distance within the PE class. Uh, Chad was sharing with you some activities that he's been able to do. So that physical distancing, uh, we got big classrooms generally because we're in the gymnasium, but it's still important that the interactions they have are maintaining that safe distance and interactions throughout the class period. Um, so the six feet uh, continues to be the recommend recommendation of that. Uh, I did point out something here. This is in the guidance, and this is really important because this is one that we were concerned about in July. And I know some people, I keep hearing this story, that they repurposed the cafeteria uh, because it's a big place to serve uh, meals. That original KDE guidance, we talked about this way back in June when we came out. And we sent letters to the Department of Ed when they sent out the food service guidance. And because it said, consider using the gymnasium. And mental, physical, and emotional health is too important for kids. Taking away your PE space, kids need PE more than ever for their social health, for their mental health. And so well, you really got to advocate to say that should be the last thing we have to do. So notice in the new KDE document, the new guidance, if social distancing not possible, have meals served in the classroom or have students bring them from the cafeteria to the classrooms to be eaten. You don't see anything about repurposing the gymnasium in the new guidance. That's really important because of that social emotional piece and that physical health piece. So we're appreciative of seeing that updated guidance around the gymnasium space. Uh, other safety expectations implemented around uh, frequent signage, uh, daily cleaning. Uh, you heard uh, Chad sharing some of those concepts. Uh, the other one, uh, and, and Dr. Creaseman, uh, Brian Creaseman, our superintendent of the year, he shared this one. I, I follow him on Facebook and Twitter, and we talk. Uh, he was just looking for some professional development for Fleming County the other day because he's a he was a big advocate in June. He's a big advocate in September. Use outside space whenever you can, as much as you can. Uh, that that outdoor space tends to be the great equalizer. You don't have to worry about ventilation. You don't have to worry about filters. It kind of takes that X factor out of it. 
Uh, we're really fortunate right now in Kentucky. We're having an early fall and we're having some amazing weather. Um, so I hope that pattern continues and that really allows our PE teachers to be very creative and innovative. Uh, but whenever feasible, use outdoor classrooms, outdoor space. That's not just for PE, that's all sorts of different instructional opportunities. Uh, cleaning and disinfection. Uh, there are some sections in here that specifically mention gymnasium, classroom, locker rooms, um, things like that, and what to do. High touch areas, uh, such as water fountains. Uh, so frequent, making sure that you're working with your custodial staff, and, and this is all hands on deck. We, this is not, COVID is not just leaving it up custodians. This is everybody owning the responsibility of keeping all kids safe. And so everybody's got to step up to the table and make sure that your school is communicating uh, these things to help keep our kids in school. Uh, we don't want to be in a situation where we're in and out of instruction. So the more we can adhere to these things, the more likely you are to have successful uh, in-class experiences and be able to continue to do that. Another one that comes up that's very popular, this is in the document as well, around playgrounds. Again, you're going to see guidance, you're going to see considerations, but ultimately it's up to your school and your district how you handle and how you do this transition on the playground. I think the other thing that comes into play here is that color-coded map we have, right? And so if you're in the green versus in the yellow, still in person, you're doing the rotating schedules, all of these things are factors that you take into, and that's the reason Shape America was genius and saying considerations. These are the things to think about. That's, the, that's how we want to frame all of these things. These are not a have tos. These are things you need to think about in order to protect your kids. And then lastly, there is a specific thing in there uh, on a section around gymnasiums, PE classrooms, and weightlifting rooms, around uh, frequent sanitation, hand hygiene rules, uh, reminding students to do that. I have two sons here at home. I can tell you, I still got to do the hand washing reminders every single day. We're six months into a global pandemic and they don't instinctively wash their hands on their own. So that's very true of, of all of our students and reminding them on, on a regular basis, hand sanitizer, washing those hands, and that's gonna keep us all safe. Uh, the, the cool bipart product of some of this, I don't know if you've seen some of the stuff, you know the North and Southern hemispheres are flipped. Southern hemispheres went through COVID, but they've also been through their winter session. Flu season down there has, has been very minimal because everybody's done such a good job with COVID prevention. The same things that prevent COVID also would have helped to keep the flu away and prevent the spread of flu. So hopefully that pattern will remain true here. If we're doing these things around hand washing and masking, that's going to help reduce flu being an impact this, this fall as well, as well as this spring. Um, and lastly, uh, before I turn this over to Sean, uh, this was in our last news update. Uh, Julie Martin, uh, we're very excited to have her at the Department of Education. She's joined the, C, uh, the KDE team. Uh, so working with Jim Tackett and Stephanie Bungie, uh, she's on one year loan under a C, C, Sean's getting ready to present. He's CDC funded through Shape America. Julie is CDC funded uh, through the Kentucky Department of Education. And so CDC has COVID funds around the country. We were very fortunate to be a state that received those. So she's gonna be working a lot and helping to support virtual hybrid learning, uh, helping implement with the co-ops, social emotional learning. Uh, so one of the big events you'll be hearing more about that we wanna make sure you have on your radar is November the 13th, World Kindness Day. We'll be doing some awesome promotional things with Health Moves Minds for World Kindness Day. So make sure you have that on your calendar, mark it, and we'll have some exciting things coming related to that. Mr. Sean Nevels, a tee you up, man. We've got, uh, we've been talking Shape America considerations. It's a lot to keep up with. And I was really excited to be on the board call with you earlier this week. And uh, we're, I just let Sean know before he joined us. We only, I only asked him yesterday, but I told him, I said, Sean, I only asked these other presenters the day before that. So, so this was one that we were trying to put out there. We wanted to do it quicker rather than into the weekend because we know a lot of people are going back on Monday, potentially to in-person instruction. So right now we want to make sure everybody just has the right information, the accurate information. And you got four days to kind of fine tune some things if you're going to be back in person with kids. So Sean, we really appreciate having you on board and we'd be glad to turn it over to you right now, man. Hey, thank you, Jamie. Thank you, Kai Shave. Thank you, anybody, no matter what state you're from that's tuning in to us this evening, um, great information. And that's, you know, just so many great conversations around, you know, 
this panel right now. And, you know, I'm just here to kind of support that. So I'm with Shape America. I was formerly with the Missouri Department of Elementary and Secondary Education. I still represent Most Shape. I do a lot of work with them, a lot of great work. Tom Lowry is their executive director. Um, but I'm with Shape now, and I'm the program manager for the CDC uh, COVID-19 project. And just like Jamie said, it's CDC funded. Um, so when we think about health and physical education and what that means, especially when it comes to CDC, it's about defining the importance of health and physical education when we support the whole child. It doesn't matter if you're in person, hybrid, virtual, it's about how you're supporting um, your students and where health and physical education falls in line with that. So if you're looking at this with Kamala, the whole school, whole community, whole child, we're at the top of this. Um, we, we lead the charge when it comes to the social, emotional, mental, physical well-being of students. And it's always important to keep that in mind. And as you go around, there's other aspects to that, nutritional services, health services, um, the psychological services going around, and then employee wellness. I know Lydia kind of talked about it a little bit, but your wellness during this time, during this pandemic, matters just as much as those students. Remember, we are the advocates. We are the, the, um, the models for a healthy lifestyle and well-being. So make sure you're taking care of yourself in order to take care of those students as well. Um, this is the biggest part of addressing what health and physical education will be in whatever environment you're in, no matter what that mode of instruction is. So always keep this WISC model, the CDC WISC model, you know, in your thoughts as you do your teaching, you do your instruction. Um, three parts to the project, the CDC project that I'm doing, the COVID-19 project that I, you know, that I'm running with Shape America is communication, information, and resources. And when we talk about communication, it's aligning yourself with other things and broader things that are going on. Once again, going back to that WISC model in the whole community um, is identifying ways to, to um, keep the narrative of physical activity, health education, and physical education alive. So the CDC recognizes September as National Childhood Obesity Awareness Month. Um, we've posted some information through social media to Shape America about resources that we have, um, try, you know, reached out to certain stakeholders to let them know, hey, um, physical activity is important. It always has been. It always will be. But it's important, especially um, as students are re-entering schools or reopening and schools are reopening because they've lost that time. They've lost that physical activity. Um, when schools close. So it's really important to use these moments as you're going back into your buildings to really address, once again, that overall well-being of students, but use things like this, September and National uh, Childhood Obesity Awareness Month, as kind of your pilot to uh, addressing physical activity, once again, whether you're in, the, in person or students are at home. Another thing that's going on come October is Health Literacy Month, and SHAPE has a page dedicated for that. I click on that, kind of walk through some stuff going on. So as you can see, that's kind of the time to start addressing health literacy, health education. Once again, physical liter literacy still matters during that time, but we have some health education resources to kind of guide you through October. And in particular, uh, it's not on this page, it'll be on my next page, but um, it's bring your family, um, or being PE to your family week, and we'll kind of go in that here in a bit, but you have your October Health Literacy Month calendars, resources, assessment tools, and things like that for Health Literacy Month. And then also, just like Jamie said, you come November, it's World Kindness Day, so just using communication part, using opportunities like that to advocate for the profession, to inform stakeholders, families on what we're doing, you know, why our work matters during this time, especially to, to address the whole child. Another resource that's out there, a healthy home is an active home. Once again, not all students are going to be in the building. So how do we reach those students that are not in our schools? How do we get, you know, reach them in their homes? And then also, how do we use that moment to support families that have students in the home? So going back to what I was saying, October, uh, middle of October 19th through the 23rd is bring PE to your family week. So use those moments to to support once again the whole child the well-being the physical mental social emotional well-being and definitely a lot of resources on this page as well i did share that with jamie hopefully that's able to get out to you all um kaiser playbook on reopening schools some stuff to read there obviously always have to have health moves minds as a part of what we do because it's such a a good um it's a good program to address 
um, the mindfulness and the wellness of our students and ourselves as well. A couple different, a uh, couple different more, excuse me, more resources there. Junior NBA at home for those, you know, basketball heads, especially during the playoff season. Um, and more of your um, mind, body, physical activity calendars there as well. So that was the communication part. And now there's information to talk about. So, you know, how do we do that? Well, we're doing it right now through our virtual town hall. Jamie has done a good job of doing that. Shay, we will do that to continue to have those continued conversations because as this school year is happening, things are gonna continue to evolve and we're gonna continue to be better. So we can use those virtual town halls to come together, share resources, share success stories, share areas of improvement, areas of opportunity um, to, to continue effective instruction in our health and physical education classrooms, in-person, hybrid, or virtual. Webinars, obviously that's a big, it's always been a big thing. Zoom has given us uh, you know, that opportunity to do it better and do it live, do it and save it and store it for teachers to come back to later. So be on the lookout for those, the Shape Online Institute, which is housed in the Shape America website where for some things you can earn credits. And then different topics that we have going on. So culturally responsive and trauma-informed health and physical education instruction. Once again, there's a lot lost, not just learning, but uh, um, the, the overall well-being of our students needs to be addressed. You know, how can we do that within our classroom? So we'll address topics on culturally responsive and trauma-informed instruction. Wellness, I've said that a couple times. It's not just students, it's us as well. It's teachers, educators as well. Mental health kind of goes hand in hand with wellness. And then another big part of the work that I'm doing is equity, diversity, and inclusion. Um, it, it's a growing topic and just overall in the field of education. So how do we start to integrate that into our instruction, into health and physical education, into health literacy, physical literacy. How do we address topics of access when it comes to the digital learning environment? How about access when it comes to the physical environment of students that don't have certain opportunities to be um, active outside of their homes or within their community for whatever reason? And, and big part of this project I'm truly excited about we are bringing back the Shape America podcast. Um, the team has worked well to get that up and going. Joey's done a great job um, um, behind the scenes and making that happen. I will be hosting a, a few shows myself, a few episodes. Once again, going back on a lot of those topics we just talked about previously, including wellness, equity, diversity, inclusion, teacher self-care, mental health, um, instruction in the classroom, success stories, and things like that. So be on the lookout for... Um, the Shape America podcast. Now, you got an email today. Big, big win for the Shape America team is we relaunched our COVID-19 resources to a COVID-19 library, a database of, of resources, tools, considerations, things you can use to help yourself and help your school, help your students as schools are reopening. Um, Shout out once again to Carly, Ben, Deanna on the Shape America team for making that happen. It took basically since I started this job in August to get this going. So I'm excited. Jamie, for some reason, is always on the cusp of things. He's probably the first one to break the news that I got the job at Shape. Now he's the first to have me on when we launched these resources today. So uh, kudos to Kai Shape, Executive Director Jamie Sparks for, um, for being uh, news breakers all the time. <laughs> um, but going to the page, main page there you see things kind of broken down into different categories you have your reentry considerations once again that word considerations professional learning instructional tools social emotional learning trauma-informed practices instructional videos which will start adding um as we learn more about instruction and what that looks like i know lydia was talking about you know we not we don't necessarily know what it's going to look like especially for that in person yet but once we start getting there and teachers start to be successful, we'll use some of those teachers, those stories to house it in the instructional video part so you can see how it's done with physical distancing in mind and then self-care. Once again, a big narrative that's going to happen throughout this year is self-care, making sure we're addressing ourselves and our students as well. Clicking on reentry considerations gets you to that, um, gets you to that library I was talking about. Top Top right there, Jamie already said it's the reentry consideration, Shape America reentry consideration, things you can do when schools are reopening, instructional practices to be to, to um, guide effective quality instruction in your classroom. I know Chad talked about um, 
cleaning and disinfecting. We have a whole bunch of CDC resources that, can, that helps you and guides you there when it comes to guidance for schools, cleaning and disinfecting for public spaces. What does that look like in higher education? How do you protect yourself and others around you? Jamie mentioned the cloth mask. That's, it talks about that in that. It leads you to that CDC webpage. Also, you have instructional tools and resources. These are things that, uh, things that were created, things that were shared to shape, to me, but just resources of instruction. Uh, NC Shape has some of their stuff in there. Most Shape has some of their own as well. But if you're looking for easy lessons, easy library to go to, you can download it onto your uh, desktop, your laptop, your device, or you can just share it to your Google Classroom. I know a lot of areas are using Google Classroom now. That's the time to use it. Professional learning, once again, going back to some instructional videos that were already happening over the summer through, through school closures. Um, best practice delivering online hybrid, and then once again the the two part series that Shape did following their uh, following the uh, the opening of the re entry guidance or excuse me their considerations, um, the best practices of health ed and physical education. So, want to thank you all. Thank you all for taking the time to kind of go through this with me. And I know Lydia had you know kind of a motto for what she was talking about. And mine is truly to be the change. Um, Jamie says it a lot. I know here at Shea, we say advocate, advocate, advocate. You, we, as for health and physical education, we have to advocate for our students, for our profession, for our content, for our community. That's the biggest part of uh, the transformation of what a health and physical education is, especially um, according to the WISC model. Um, so be the change not just in your classrooms, in the lives of your students, in their families' lives, and in your communities. And I want to throw just one quick shout um, to Kentucky. Um, I know a lot has been going on for a lot of states during this pandemic, but when you add the element of um, equity and social justice, I know that whole, throws a whole nother um, fuel to the fire. So my thoughts, my prayers go out to the state of Kentucky. Um, I wish the best for you all individually. I wish the best for those in your homes, your families. I wish the best for your communities, your students and their families that, uh, as you go through this time. Thank you. Great. Sean, thank you so much, man. We really appreciate it. And thank you for the kind words there. Um, yeah, and be the change, man. That's a, that's a great message to uh, close with and something that we as a board and as an association value very much. And, uh, we look forward to continuing to, to be advocates in all things. You know, I, I'll steal the, uh, the quote from uh, Health Moves Minds. Uh, we're all in this business to build better humans. And I hope that's what we're all continuing to lift each other up and, uh, and reflect and, and do exactly that. Uh, Daniel, I'm looking at questions. I think you've been monitoring questions. I haven't seen any specific questions that haven't been answered in the chat so far. Um, we, 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 we did, uh, um, roll with this tonight because we do know that this will be available on YouTube. It'll be available on Facebook. And as I said, for the next four days, um, this gives people at, at their leisure the opportunity to check back in on this conversation. Uh, Lydia and Chad, thank you so much uh, for sharing uh, your expertise. You guys are both wonderful representatives of, of our state and of our profession. And we appreciate what you're doing as, as, as board members, but also as teachers of the year as well. Uh, same to, to Miss Jo Geddes. Uh, we appreciate her chiming in. We'll be tapping into our other Teachers of the Year as well uh, because this was such a quick turnaround. Uh, it was really easy to reach out to board members and get them engaged and involved in, in doing that and Daniel's always up to it. So I know Robin's picking on us, Daniel, behind the scenes a little bit, but uh, we yeah. got four days to get this message out and I think our members are, will be really appreciative of, of that. Sean, thank you again for that. And uh, most people uh, are looking for that PD certificate. So um, I'm going to quickly share the screen over to that. Uh, if you have your smartphone, you can simply uh, scan that. Uh, we'll also have an archive version of this uh, to do, but uh, that should take you right to the form where you request it, and then it'll send you a link to download your PDF or your one hour PD certificate. So, and Lydia and Chad will make sure you get your PD certificate as well. You don't, you don't have to get out your smartphone right now. And Daniel, too. All 
Awesome, everybody. Uh, we'll leave that on the screen. Uh, well, it'll freeze on your screen if we if we cut this off. So all you got to do is scroll back to the end of the uh, Facebook live feed or whatever. But uh, I know it's a late night, especially for those of us, those of us on the East Coast. So I'm going to stop the live stream. Everybody have a great night.